In previous videos, we took the time to derive spherical coordinates and the unit vectors associated with the spherical coordinates. We're going to take it one step further in this video and derive the gradient operator in spherical coordinates. So if you haven't seen those videos already, I recommend checking them out because I'm going to assume you already know how to convert from Cartesian to spherical coordinates and where the unit vectors in spherical come from. Now before actually getting into the derivation, I want to point out that I did skip over some of the algebra in this derivation. I did not skip over any of the thought processes or essential parts of the derivation, but if you're looking for an extremely thorough derivation of gradient and spherical coordinates, this might not be the video for you. I just wanted to let you know before carrying on, but let's get to it. The reason I said that this is for physics majors is so that you know that we're going to be using the physics convention for phi corresponding to the angle between the x-axis and the r-vector and theta corresponding uh, to the angle between the z-axis and the r-vector. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is start taking derivatives of each of these functions x, y, and z with respect to their independent variables r, phi, and theta. After going through a little bit of the calculus, these are the relationships we should all get after taking uh, the derivative of each of those functions with respect to the three independent variables. Well, the next step for us is to define what d dr, d d theta, and d d phi are by implementing chain rule. So we can define d dr equal to d x dr, d d x plus d y dr, d d y plus d z dr, d d z. And the great thing about us constructing this list here is you'll notice that all of these things we've already defined. And we're going to do the same thing for d d theta. Since we know what all these leading terms are, because we've already calculated them, we can just plug them in now and simplify. So this gives right because dx dr is just this term here plus dy dr, which is going to be sine theta. And I'm probably just going to speed up the rest of this. Now what we have here is we have three systems of equations where we have explicit definitions for ddr, dd theta, and dd phi. But what we want are explicit definitions of ddx, ddy, and ddz. And the way that we can do that is we could use substitution method where we solve one equation for one of these variables in terms of all of the rest. And then what we could do is substitute that definition into the following equation and iterate this until we get expressions for dx, dy, and dz all by themselves. This is a huge amount of algebra and I don't think it's consequential to this video, so I'm going to skip this with a clean conscience. So I hope no one's upset for me not going through the rigorous algebra, but I hope you understand that that's not exactly the point of this derivation. It's seeing more so the logic that leads you to one step over the other, not testing you on how well you can do substitution method of solving linear equations. Having said that, after going through all of that trouble, this is the result you should get for ddx, ddy, and ddz in terms of r, theta, and phi. Now in a previous video, we derived these unit vectors in spherical coordinates in terms of the unit vectors in Cartesian coordinates. And again, we're going to have to solve for the x, y, and z uh, unit vectors. Now this one you can actually be a little clever with in order to uh, to convert the two. And what we're going to do, say we want to solve for x hat first. What we're going to do is we're going to exploit the orthogonality of the unit vectors in Cartesian coordinates in order to simplify our equations. 
And what I mean is if I were to take the dot product between x hat and y hat, well the angle between those two is 90 degrees so their dot product goes to zero. And we're going to exploit that. So if we go ahead and take uh, the dot product between x hat dot r hat, what that gives us is we're getting sine theta cosine phi x hat dot x hat and that's just going to be 1, right, because the magnitude of x hat is just 1. So we can get rid of that and we get that x hat dot r hat is going to give us sine cosine phi because these terms go to 0 because x hat is orthogonal to y hat and z hat. And we can apply the same logic to x hat dot theta hat. Well, that's going to give us, again, this term goes to 1, so we get cosine theta, cosine phi. And the other terms go to 0, again, because of orthogonality. And then the last one that we have is x hat dot phi hat. So x hat dot phi hat. And again, this term goes to 0, so we get this is equal to minus sine that's not how that looks. Minus sine phi. Yes. And the cool thing about expressing it this way is what we actually just solve for are the r hat, theta hat, and phi hat components of x hat. So that means that what we can write is that x hat is equal to sine theta cosine phi r hat plus uh, cosine theta cosine phi theta hat minus sine theta phi hat. Alright, so let's go ahead and take the dot product with y hat in these uh, unit vectors. We'll get the, oops, that's easy. y hat dot r hat. Again, the only thing that's going to survive is the y hat term, which is going to give us a sine theta sine phi. y hat dot theta hat is just going to give us a cosine theta sine phi and y hat dot phi is just going to give us a cosine theta. Okay, And what we get here is that we can get that y hat is equal to sine theta sine phi uh, r hat plus cosine theta sine phi uh, theta hat plus cosine theta phi hat. Great. And that last term that was there was actually a phi, not a theta. But moving on to z hat, we can do z hat dot r hat. And the only thing that's going to survive is a cosine theta. z hat dot theta hat is just going to split us out a minus sine theta. You'll notice that there's no z component of the theta direction, which gives us our final unit vector converting to Cartesian being, let's see, cosine theta r hat minus sine theta z hat. Nope, that's a theta hat. Great. Now we're almost done, we're getting there. Now the next and last step is actually to just take the definition of the gradient operator in Cartesian coordinates. We can define the gradient equal to x hat d dx plus y hat d dy plus z hat d dz. And thankfully, we have all the pieces to do this. We have our x hat, y hat, and z hat here, and we have our ddx, ddy, and ddz here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply them together now. All right, so step one, let's find out what x hat ddx is. Well, x hat is just going to be this term, so we are going to have, let's see here,
great. So now all we have to do is multiply all of this together. Fine. Then what we can also do is we can define y hat d d y and go through the same thing. Okay. And one last time with z hat d d z gives us. Now again, this isn't a video on how to do algebra. Um, this is again a thought process video on how to go from point A to point B. So I'm not going to go through all of this tedious algebra, but I'm going to show you what happens when all the dust settles. After all the algebra is carried through, what we get is that del is equal to r hat ddr plus one over r theta hat dd theta plus one over r sine theta phi hat d d phi. It's kind of hard to believe that after all of this is uh, foiled out and then added to each other that you get something as simple as this. But I leave it, I can't believe I'm about to say this, I leave this as an exercise for the watcher or for the viewer to carry out all that algebra. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope this gives you a deeper appreciation for being able to look in the back of any physics textbook and see what the, uh, what the gradient operator in spherical coordinates actually is. Um, as you can probably predict, getting to the Laplacian has been a very rigorous journey, uh, but we'll get to it in due time. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, see you guys next time.